Hey there, Will Marshall here. It's been a week now since I unboxed Microsoft's new Surface Go 2. I've spent the last seven days with it, testing it, using it as part of my everyday life, um, using it at work for, for some note taking, for some email typing. Um, and I just wanted to check back in and give you my sort of my review, my thoughts about the device, where I think this fits for a lot of people, um, how well I think it can work for a lot of people, and just some things kind of to take into consideration if you are to think about going ahead and purchasing one of these devices. So I'm going to try and split, split this up into four sections really. So the first part I'll talk about, you know, the form factor of the device, how well that works. Number two, I'll talk about the performance of the device. Number three, I'll talk about the pen and the SARS input. And then finally, number four, I'll touch on the battery life and how that fares on this Surface Go 2. So number one, the form factor of the device. So, yep, it's a Surface Go. It's a Surface product. You expect it to be a premium build and it delivers on that front. I love the fact that they've reduced these bezels down. So the original version with the very thick bezels was a bit of an eyesore to look at and you know that kind of you put a downer on the whole product in many ways. Number two, my other favorite part of the device is this kickstand. I mean, Surf and Microsoft do it really well. They've just got it right, basically. I mean, there, there isn't much more you can say about that. You know, it goes to all angles from very flat like this all the way up to kind of a sharp 90 degree, things like that and you can fix it almost anywhere, right? So I found actually the lapability of this particular Surface was a lot better than when I had my old Surface Pro 1. I often like to sort of lounge on the couch and do a bit of browsing, but sometimes you might need to you know, quickly answer an email, pop out an email and answer. And so tapping a name an email out on the screen can take you know a little bit of time. It's not particularly, not particularly nice and fun to do that. But what is great about this device is you can flip the keyboard case around, you can adjust this kickstand all the way back out to here get it into a nice position, a flat position, and you can balance it on your leg and you can be away typing. And because of its size, I found the balance to be, you know, a lot better than I expected actually. So I think that I think that that's a real positive about this device. If you are thinking about or on the fence about, you know, the um the balance and being able to use it on your lap and things like that, situations like that, then I think I would say that the service go too because of its size you're not going to have any problem with that. I think the only thing I would perhaps raise is the fact that, you know, because of its small size, it is quite cramped. The keyboard itself particularly is quite cramped. I wouldn't say that the device is cramped to use, but, you know, the keyboard, when you're trying to type on that, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. Number two, we're going to talk a little, about, a little bit about the performance now. And so this is a, a difficult question here because I've got the um, the Core M3 variant of the Surface Go 2. That's the you know the, the highest spec model with eight gigabytes of RAM and one to eight gigabytes of storage, and that costs six hundred and twenty pounds. I think it is this one seven hundred and twenty with the LTE chip in it. Um, that's not the base model. The three nine nine key selling point device has this Intel Pentium Gold processor, which you know a lot of reviews have come back in favorably, saying it's sluggish, it doesn't perform very well. Um, so I went for this M3 device pr primarily because I wanted to use it as a productivity machine and I wanted to be able to test it as a productivity machine. And to be honest, I didn't find anything really that this couldn't handle. I wasn't expecting it to be able to play you know, AAA class games. I wasn't expecting it to be able to edit 4K video in real time on here. That's not what this is for. But you know, you can get by with an awful lot of things. It was very snappy using everyday tasks, email, browsing the web, all that as you'd expect. Um, a bit of light gaming, so I tried out some emulation. I'm a big fan of emulation, emu emulated gaming. Um, I, I, I spun up um, Dolphin, the GameCube, GameCube emulator on here, and I got some good frame rates out of them, out of Mario Kart Double Dash and out of um, The Legend of Zelda. They chugged a little bit sometimes in the cutscenes, but you know, um, it was perfectly usable. And I think if you're going to be taking this out and about portability wise, I feel that having that ability just, just, to, just to spin up some, some some quick games on the fly, things you might be able to enjoy away from your main gaming setup. I think this is I think this device is going to be able to handle that, no problem. I also tried to do some video editing on this. So in fact, I actually edited the entirety of the Service Go unboxing video on this device. And aside from there being you know a little bit of stuttering in the playback of the video when I was kind of doing the, um, the cuts, it, it was absolutely fine. I mean, it wasn't you know lagging or wasn't slow to the point of it being annoying. It, it just worked. It was it was perfectly usable. I think those two use cases in particular showcase just how capable actually this Surface Go 2 is as an ultra portable device. I don't think anyone really is going to have a huge amount of problem with it performance wise. I guess one of the downsides to the Surface Go, um, and we, we we I think we all come back to this is you know Windows 10 is not really a tablet optimized OS, okay? So if you want a device of this form factor to use on the couch, surfing the net as a tablet, primarily a tablet computer, 
I think there are probably better solutions. I still think a lot can be said for um, using the web browser in place of a lot of these apps. So I'm a big fan of the new Chromium Build of Edge. So you can take web pages that have got you know PWA apps written for them, um, or just like standard web apps, and you can turn that into a little app that you can pin to the taskbar. And I found that to be ample, to be fair, for the, the main apps that I would use on a device, things like Pinterest, uh, Twitter, you can do that with um, uh, Google Play Music, uh, YouTube Music, I use that as well, YouTube itself, and Gmail, all these things I could do. Didn't need to go to an app store to get those apps, they're all there. If you want them in the tabs and the browser, you can do that. If you want them in their own little dedicated window, you know, the new age browser lets you lets you build them into, build them out as little apps that you can then run on the own. So you can certainly get by, you know, as a, with a tablet OS and it does work in many ways. In some, some respects it's a lot better because it's so flexible. But, you know, if you're someone who really wants that core app experience, then I think an iPad solution is going to be the way to go for you there. Okay, so point number three, the, um, the stylus input. Now this is again something I said last week that I was really keen on when I was looking at this device. It was a key driving factor to being interested in buying a Surface Go 2. I think I'd seen a few reviews at the outset where I'd seen the pen looking like it was lagging in response, especially when compared to an iPad and the Apple Pencil next to it. But when I got this down and I had it, you know, I got I, I got one note on it and I was, you know, using it for my everyday note taking, I didn't find that to be the case at all on this particular device. Um, the, um, the pen input is smooth, there is very little lag. Um, I actually find as a pen, the stylus, I think the Surface Pen is actually a better choice than the than the Apple Pencil or I think a lot of other kind of first party styluses. I think just because there are little things about it, it's this, you know, there's some slight movement in the tip which gives you that feedback when writing on the screen. The tip's got some slight texture to it, right? Which again, when writing on the glass gives you the feel that you're writing on a surface that's not glass, on, on a paper surface. The button configurations here, you know, you've got the the button on the end which doubles as an eraser, really nice touch. Um, if you single click this or double click this, you can configure certain apps to open. I had it opening OneNote and then the, um, the, the Windows whiteboard application. The little button on the side can be used to select text. Okay, so some downsides to this Surface Pen drawing and, drawing and type of writing experience. I think there's a couple of things here. The, um, the, there is the well-documented issue with the entry technology, I think, that the, the that Microsoft use in the Surface lineup and in the Surface Pen, which you know, gives you some jitter when you try and draw straight lines. Um, I didn't really notice this because I don't, I'm not, I don't use it as an artist tab, but I used it primarily just for jotting down notes, so that wasn't really a problem for me at all, but it's something to be aware of if you're someone who's looking to buy this device um, for drawing. And if there are lots of dedicated videos to using a Surface Go 2 for drawings, which I, so I suggest you go and check some of those out. I think overall, an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil is going to beat out this experience, but I think the difference is so marginal. I mean, that device has got a 120 hertz display. It's not going to beat that, but you know, to be honest, it comes pretty damn close. And for 99% of people, I think this is going to be an excellent drawing and writing experience. So finally, number four, the battery life, and this is where things I think fall over a little bit for the Surface Go 2. The battery life um, wasn't great when I was using it this week, so you tend to get about between i got between three and five hours into a regular use so i got sort of three hours when i was using it for quite intensive purposes when i was doing the video editing i had it on its battery i sort of chewed the juice there best performance mode in around three three and a half hours um when i was using it kind of every day just to kind of you know, say jot notes down do a bit of typing a bit of email response some zoom calls i was getting between four and five hours um on my dedicated video streaming test i streamed some 1080p footage from youtube continuously with the screen brightness set at 75% and the battery and the energy performance set to kind of battery, best battery mode, um, I got six hours dead for that. So I kind of hope we'd have a slightly better battery than that on the Surface Go 2 at the outset. Just something to, to bear in mind, this is not going to be a device that you can, you know, really push all day and get all day on, get through all day on. I guess one of the, the positives here is you've got, you know, the, the, the USB-C port on the side of this can also be used to charge. So one thing you you would, have, you would be okay with it, you'd be able to take this device on with a single charger. Most smartphones, they use USB-C. They all should really use, be using USB-C. So you've got one charger, you can just use the same charger you use for your phone, quickly top this up. I don't think it's gonna be a, any real issue to a lot of people, but you know, if you want the long battery life, then I don't think the Surface Go 2 is gonna be, you know, top of your list, to be honest. Okay, so some final wrap-up thoughts. Um, you know, I really like this device. 
I really enjoyed using it this week. I feel it was a, um, it, you know, it's well built. It performs really well. You can do so much stuff on it. I think the, what, if I used, had to use one word to describe the Surface Go to, I'd say it's flexible. It's a really flexible machine. It does everything, you know, well. It's an all-rounder device. But you know, that being said, there are kind of two sides to the discussion, right? So if you really want a, a tablet device, a small form factor tablet, which is well as it excels, its form factor, size, weight. If you really want that as a tablet device that you want to consume media on, watch Netflix, browse the web, um, play a few games on some apps, then the Surface Go 2 really isn't for you. With a keyboard and the device, you know, the pen being another hundred pounds, starts so at eight hundred pounds with the pen. That's a lot of money to spend on sort of a casual kind of like consumer device for browsing the internet and things like that. So you you probably much better serve there spending you know three three hundred and thirty pound on the basic iPad or even four hundred quid on the or four five hundred quid on the on the iPad Air you know which is probably the closest rival to this. Productivity wise, this runs rings around iOS to be honest. You know it's just you know the, the file explorer is you know exactly as you'd expect for a computer. You can do. I mean, almost any application that you want, do anything you really want, as you would do on a normal computer, it's just it's on a smaller screen. If you want something that's really productivity focused, then this is the device for you. But would you would you buy this as your single machine? I think when you're getting up towards that kind of eight hundred pound mark for a device, it's a significant investment, right? You have to, you know, if it's your secondary device and you can afford that, then great. If you want an ultra portable, um, productivity focused machine, it's your second device, which you can get by with a small screen. That then this this is the this is this is this is the job for you. But you know if you want to get you know a bit more a bit more computer for your money, right? If you want to get something like something a bit bigger, something with a little bit more spec. I mean, there's plenty out there. That's the thing. You know, you are paying a little bit for the Microsoft brand brand on here, the badge. You're paying for the you know the, the unique sort of form factor of this Surface Go to. It's just hard to kind of suggest this to be someone's sole device I think you're really going to want to buy the the slightly higher spec Core M3 variant as well to get the most out of the machine so with the those higher prices involved you're moving away from that kind of really unique and really um, tempting 400 pound mark upwards towards you know six seven eight hundred pounds which is you know getting into kind of more serious laptop territory and then you have to really think about what you want at that point Okay, right, so I think that's it for my review of the Surface Go 2. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed it and you enjoyed the, seeing the unboxing experience as well. If you want to leave some comments in the um, below the video, I'll be, I'll be really happy to get back to you and um, take your feedback and suggestions for any further reviews and videos. Um, if you like what you see, please hit subscribe and um, please also hit the bell button the next, to, next to subscribe so you can get alerts when I post new videos. I hope to be posting a few more over the next few weeks. And of course, just you know, like the video if you like what you see and I'll try and do some more going forward. Everyone stay safe, look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.